Welcome to Richard Maybe Presents. Hello, YouTube friends. This is Richard Maybe with Richard Maybe Presents. It's Thursday, May 23rd, 2024, at 12, roughly, well, 12.34 in the daytime <laughs> so um uh, i know a lot of you have been asking about uh the uh, macari site and everything like that um so this is the name of the macari store that my sister has ec maybe now the best way to get on to that uh, Macari store, EC Maybe, my sister's uh, Macari store, is go put in uh, in the search, in Macari, put in the search engine, Batman comic books. That'll bring up to bat, a whole slew of Batman comic books. And then just filter down to you see EC Maybe, and then uh, click that comic book on and then you can click on to EC maybe yeah, I, I think we, we have uh, at this point either either I don't know some, it's nearly 400 or over 400 comic books so it's got uh, we got the funny books you know the Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and all that kind of thing Mickey Mouse and then we've got um, Flash, Batman, Superman, Justice League, Spider-Man, um, Iron Man, Captain America, that whole bit. <laughs> so, and I think I have some Charlton up there as well. So, um, yeah, so, you know, if you want to check that out. Oh, um, funny thing last night, dreams are a funny thing, uh, especially as you get older. Because essentially, I know how crazy this may sound, but sometimes in a dream, it's almost so the dream is so real that when you after waking up, I find this uh, for maybe a minute or two, um, I'm somewhere between the dream and the reality. You know, it's like that Twilight Zone, eerie, spaced out feeling. You know, what was it? Was the the dream was so real? You wonder if the dream was real. And last night I was dreaming about uh, the summer. The summer. Uh, the summer when I was uh, ten years old, and I just completed the fifth grade. So that would be 60, 61, 62, 63. The summer of nineteen sixty four. And uh, Stu and I used to sleep out a lot, and my cousin Dave would sleep out with us in the backyard. Now, to understand the backyard <laughs> of the old maybe homestead, um, we were we were on a three three we had a three acre lot. But actually, the original uh, um, parcel of land. Uh, which the Maybe Homestead was built on by my great grandfather William Maybe uh, was um, I think like 27 acres. It went from Route 202. If you if you ever look up Lincoln Park, New Jersey, Route 202, aka Main Street, and it went all the way back to the Morris Canal, which was like. A really long maybe lane went from um, maybe lane went from route 202 all the way to um, incline plane 10 east on the Morris Canal so it was a really long road but now uh, the the um, was my my grandpa's sisters when they were still alive and had sold each had been given parcel parcels of land, and that sold that. <laughs> I gotta check this out. I'll be right back. 
Opie, say hello to your fans. Opie, Opie, say hello to your fans. Opie, Opie, say hello to your fans. Opie, Opie, say hello to your fans. Hey, Ope, Ope, say hello to your fans, buddy. How you doing, pal? Say hello to your fans, pal. Hey, buddy. Ope, Opie, Opie, Opie. Yeah, that's a boy. Say hello to your fans. Give a little meow to your fans. Opie's too cool. He's sitting here on this chair. This this chair right here. This chair right. It's hard to do. That's this chair. This chair right here. And he's just taking it all in. And there's geckos jumping around on the little cement block there and teasing him. And butterflies are flying around and squirrels are going around the hedges and that kind of thing so he's having a good old time here he's cute uh yeah so um we had this huge backyard and there must have been i, I i'm not exactly it must have been 50 trees in our backyard mostly maple trees these big tall towering maple trees so this is a place in the yard where there were um this triangle of, maple, of huge, tall, towering maple trees. And we used to put the tent underneath the um, those trees. Now, we were at the tent. Um, what happened was the Boy Scouts um, bought new tents. So uh, the my dad was Scoutmaster for 30 years. So the, 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 my dad... The troop committee chairman and uh, the troop committee decided, well, you know, um, you could buy a tent for ten dollars. And I bought this tent with my own money. You know, I was like, um, it was the summer. I remember it was in 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 June, in early summer, of uh, 1964. No, wait, where is it? I, well, at any rate, I can't remember exactly when it was, but they, they sold the tents for ten. It was a legitimate thing, you know. I just didn't. It wasn't like, oh, I got a tent because my dad's scoutmaster. No, I got a tent because I, with my own money, birthday money and Christmas money and, uh, you know, saving up my allowance, sacrificing Mad Magazine that week, saving my uh, money and that kind of thing. So I had the ten dollars. I bought the tent with my own money. So it kind of like made. I was kind of like, if I if if my father had just given me the tent, I wouldn't have had that pride in the tent. So it was um, a four four man tent, but you could actually get six people in the tent, but four comfortably. You know, you had you could roll out your sleeping bag, have a little space. Everybody would have a little space between sleeping bags. So four worked out well, and three worked out really well. It was uh, myself, Stu, and Dave. And Dave, uh, there, was a, there was a cottage home, uh, a, uh, a carriage house on, the, on the, old May, the property of the old Maybe Homestead. And Aunt Sue and Uncle Dave and Davey, uh, my cousin Davey, lived on, uh, at the cottage the uh, carriage house so we'd sleep out so anyway um, it was early June I remember I, and I and I and it's funny I, I kind of relived this last night in this dream I had but I remember um, we used to have a mom would give us a box of chocolate chip cookies and uh, this um, glass container you know with it with the screw on top like it was like a, 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 a like an orange juice like orange juice to cut, used to, not in plastic used to come in glass so we fill that with uh, lemonade for us so we had uh, the cookies and lemonade before before we went to sleep and we would uh, sit up 
um, or or get we'd have two pillows. You know, and you kind of uh, boost your head up <laughs> and read and read comic books. It was really neat with a flashlight. We're like holding the flashlight here, put the flashlight here, and read comic books and talk and that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, so Stu and I were about Stu and I were ten years old and. Davy was, uh, I don't know, Davy was about six or seven or so. So you fall asleep. And I remember distinctly um, having, I guess I drank too much lemonade. <laughs> so I wake up and Davy always slept in the middle. And so, um, Nature called, you know. Um, how to water the tree, <laughs> keep it, keep it, uh, so I can stay on on YouTube. So um, the biggest challenge was to unzip. We used to keep the the canvas flap open and have the screen zip close, but the challenge was to to unzip the uh, screen without waking up Davy and Stu. So I unzipped, the, very quietly unzipped the screen and go out. Now, uh, it was pretty much pitch dark, pitch dark, except on Maybe Lane, there the really was, a, a, there really is a street in Lincoln Park called Maybe Lane. Maybe Lane had a one, uh, had a um, street lamp. But it was far enough away where it was just giving off like a distant light, like giving off a hue, giving off a, just a, a very low amount of light for how far the tent was from Maybe Lane. So um, got up and the Maybe, the, 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 the Maybe estate, the Maybe, the land that Maybe Homestead was on, it was, there to the south, to the south was Route 202, and then to the north was woods, and then east and west woods, all around. And I don't know why, um, right, in, right in back of the tent was a tree, but for some reason, I felt the need to go to the edge of the woods. And at the edge of the woods, there was this really old, old apple tree. And this apple tree was so old that my um, grandpa remembered in his boyhood picking apples from it, you know. So that was right at the edge of the woods there so I go to the edge of the woods I stepped a few feet into the woods and um, there was the dis distinct sound of an owl hooing you know they really do hoo they hoo 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 well, if now that I'm 70 and if I was in, in, in a little bit into the woods, I heard a woo, woo in the middle of the night, it wouldn't scare me. I'm a pretty tough guy, you know. But at 10, and it's uh, night, it's like, I don't know, maybe it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm at, in the woods by myself. It told, I mean, pitch dark. And I think I left my, I think I had left my flash. I don't remember having a, my flashlight with me. To the best of my recollection, I don't remember having my flashlight with me. I don't think, I don't. The owl. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, I watered the tree. <laughs> But the owl is like fascinating me. You know, it was just like, just like 
it, part of me was like really scared and part of me was like fascinated um almost finding it a, an enchanting moment ooh, ooh, ooh. And i look up and there's that owl and it was a big owl i i don't know how i don't i haven't i haven't really seen a lot of owls in my lifetime you know but it was like well, i can't i can't I don't have enough space to, but i mean it was a big owl you know it's on the branch on a main trunk of the apple tree and i'm i'm kind of like a few feet like maybe i don't know six feet into the woods but i can still see the you know from the angle that the the, the way the branch is the owl square on so i'm just looking at the owl And uh, I hear this, you know, you're, you're in the woods, um, as most of all of you probably know, there's just always a carpet of dead or old leaves. So I'm hearing that. And obviously something's walking through the woods. Now, if you walked a few feet to the right, there was a path. And that was the extension. There was a, 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 a road called West Drive that also at one time went to the canal, all the way to the canal. But now it only went to um, the, the last house on West Drive and the rest of it was like almost like a little path but you know a pretty good path you know pretty a nice path you could walk on comfortably and for the most part two people could walk side by side on the path but it was obvious it was no longer a road you couldn't get a car through it and you would be lucky like to get a four by four or a jeep through it it was just rough terrain you know over the years since they closed the Morris Canal. I think they closed the Morris Canal in 1923. So I am um, checking out. I'm looking up at the apple tree at the owl. And I remember looking at my tent, but it was fairly far away. And something, I was torn, like part of me said, run to the tent. And part of me said, stay, you know, because I'm hearing this. With uh, somebody walking in the forest, not too far away. And I'm looking at the path. And part of me is drawn, it was so, so strange. And why do I remember this? But part of me was drawn to walk down the path that led to the Morris Canal. And part of me was like, Richie, run to your tent. <laughs> so I'm standing there and I'm looking at the path. And I walk to the path. I walk to the path, which was only maybe six feet to my right hand side, which would have been east to the east so I'm, I'm, I'm on the the path itself now and if I'm I would say maybe maybe 10 feet 12 feet at the most there on the path is this proud, majestic, wild looking buck with, I mean, with all of these antlers coming out of its skull. 
and there's just enough light from the street lamp on Maybe Lane, just enough to make out the buck. And it must have been either a full, somewhere between a half moon or full moon. Maybe it was a full moon because I could see fairly well. And I'm glad I didn't have my flashlight because I would have instinctively turned my flashlight on and the buck stopped and maybe five seconds, six seconds, the buck and I, we were maybe 10 feet apart just looking at each other. And the buck lowered its antlers. Partly in reverence and partly I'm going to attack you. I mean, it was really that distinct. I remember the lowering of the head and just the antlers in the moonlit glow and enough of that street lamp the shoots of light coming through far from across the yard from Maybe Lane to West Drive Path. We used to call it West Drive Path. And that buck, majestic, strong, proud buck, just putting its head down in the antlers. And I, um, I know from my church, uh, talking to a few hunters, I've never hunted in my life. I have cousins that hunt and they talk about the points. Oh, it was an eight point buck or a 10 point buck or you know that kind of thing, but it had a lot of antlers. And I froze. I froze. Part of it I froze in fear and part of it I froze in awe of this majestic animal. I'm 10 years old. It's, not, it's June of 1964. Hold on folks, I'll be right back. So the buck lowers its head, shows its antlers, and then takes its forelegs and hits its hoofs into the earth, into the dried, crumpled leaves. And I'm standing there, 10 years old, looking at this buck. And the buck, ever so slowly, almost in a poetic meter, begins to walk toward me. And something just deep within the deepest chambers of my heart echoes to me this small voice it's going it's okay it's okay and the deer takes a few feet to take walks a few steps toward me and now is looking its head is up and this is the most awe-inspiring uh, incredible majestic, proud being I've ever seen in my life. That conjured in my heart both fear and reverent awe.
And once again, the deer, the buck, lowers its head. And at this point, where its antlers end and where I'm standing, five or six feet, And the deer, the buck, that majestic being, that incredible beast, the king of the forest, the king of the maybe forest, takes two steps toward me and just taps its antlers on my chest ever so gently, not with huge aggression, not with malice, not with anger, but almost like a knowingness. I am the king. I am the majestic being. This is my forest. This is my land. What are you doing here? And with that tap of the ends of those antlers onto my chest, I felt this energy. It was very much a changing moment in my life. Fear melted like a, a hunk of wax on a Florida roof, on a hot, on a on a on a tin roof in Florida in the middle of summer, just melted. The fear just melted. The deer lifted its head. Now from my nose to the deer's nose, maybe it's seven or eight feet, I don't know, but close. And then holds its head up really high. I mean, really majestically high. Kind of snarls, moving its head left and right. As if wanting to say something to me. And then turns its head and slowly walks down West Drive Lane, West Drive Path. We used to call it West Drive Path. My dad used to call it the West Path. And I'm seeing the deer, the back of the deer, walking away. Becoming smaller and smaller in the light of the moon and the light, this, this, kind of like this beams of subtle light coming from the lamppost I may be laying and the deer walks away. And I walked to my tent. And out of courtesy and respect, I had zipped down the zipper of the, of the netted door. And I zipped it up very carefully. And there's Davy and Stu asleep, comic books strewn all over the tent. You know, um, the cookie box, the bottle, you know, like there's just like a little bit of lemonade left in the bottle, in the glass bottle. And I crawl into my sleeping bag and fall back to sleep. Over the years, I've often thought of that moment in time, the great buck the great majestic buck, 
My grandfather would often talk about it, the majestic buck of the maybe woods. That's what we called them, or that's what grandpa used to call those woods, the maybe woods. I was, in the next few years, to have encounters with the buck again, the great majestic buck again and again. I think it might have been, I had like maybe two or three more encounters with the great buck. I know a lot of some of you who are religious scholars may disagree with me, and that's fine. But it was that moment was a very real, esoteric, spiritual experience an epiphany, if you will. And the deer taught me to overcome my fears at the age of 10. I had debated and debated and debated and debated and debated and debated whether or not you know to share this story story with my youtube audience my youtube friends mainly that people would uh stick pins in me but uh I don't know. I'm 70 years old. I'm in stage three of apical, apical, apical. Say it three times fast. Apical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, my current cardiologist refers to apical, apical. HCM as the cancer of the heart and it's just, there's four stages and I'm in sta I'm in the the midst of stage three and there's like you know sub categories of the stages you know 3a 3b you know blah, 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 3 3c d you know, blah, 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 blah. but I'm in the midst of stage three in the deterioration of my left ventricle it's a genetic disease it's not because I, I ate too much ice cream or drank too many coca-colas or something like that it's a genetic disease uh, it's a dominant gene and they call it the myh7 gene um, had they caught it earlier could they have slowed it down yes did i go to cardiologist yes um, up to this point in time in the last 10 years, I've been to five different cardiologists. The problem with the apical HCM is very hard to diagnose. But here's my point. I'm having the dream of the deer and the encounters of, of that buck. And there were three or four encounters with that buck. And I feel that that grand the spirit of that grand majestic buck, that most noble, noble animal, the king of the maybe forest, is in a sense calling me home. I can feel it. So, parting thoughts, love one another. Love is the most power. I think love is the most powerful force in the universe, you know. If we loved each other, we wouldn't have wars, you know. 
So, so keep a good, as Barney Fife would say, keep a good thought. So, as always, thank you for watching. And if you like this video or the old gag, I do. If you didn't, even if you didn't like this video, please smash the like button. Leave some comments. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, I need a thousand subscribers. I have 709 subscribers at this moment in time. So I need a thousand to start making money or, you know, getting monthly residual checks or deposits or automatic deposits, whatever they call it these days, making money <laughs> on YouTube. And I really need the money. Um, my, my meds are really expensive, outrageously expensive. Um, the one medicine uh, just got FDA approval and it's not, uh, it's not what do they call that? Um, what do they call that? Oh, it has no ge generic form. It has no generic form. There's no brand X. There's no cheapo brand. <laughs> so an insurance only pays so much of it, you know, and I understand. And actually, you know, if I was a, if I was a big shot in the insurance company, I said, well, they want all this money for this meds. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll give the guy a few bucks. We're not going to, we're not going to go bankrupt paying this guy for his meds. So, so please subscribe. You help me out a little bit. So I'm going to close it. <laughs> one more guy again. <laughs> it's like everybody's, I was, this guy gets his little lawn mowed, like three times a week or something because I was out here yesterday and the lawnmower was going in there in the back and the nails in the back I don't know crazy so uh, as Barney Fife would say keep a good thought so I'm going to sign off stay happy stay positive stay healthy this is Richard Navy so anyhow